side of the uh, sanctuary this morning. I apologize that I didn't get all the way around to say hello. So, to this side of the sanctuary, hello. Hello. Can we do a, a collective handshake? Just, uh, just a real quick collective handshake, all, all you. Uh, I'm going to call you guys the left-siders, okay? Because, uh, because that's the way I always see a sanctuary. See, I consider that the back door. I know that's the front door, but, but I consider it the back door. So, uh, so uh, all of you guys that are over here on the left-siders, hello, good morning, glad to see you. So glad you are here. I got to see just about everybody over here, so uh, congratulations, you got to shake my hand this morning personally. And we do the wave. Do the wave, yes, we could do the wave, but uh, we're, we're not going to do that this morning. Good to see you guys, glad you're here. Uh, welcome to our Sunday morning service, and uh, we are uh, privileged and honored to uh, be able to come into the Lord's house and uh, excited for what God has for us today. We're going to open up a, a brand new sermon series. As with most of the sermon series that I do, I have no idea how long it's going to last. Could last uh, three or four weeks, could be three or four months. Who knows? It's just going to be a mystery. But we're going to be talking about worship. And um, so I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to broach this subject and uh, to get into something that I feel like is, is uh, misunderstood neglected and uh and and really to be honest with you kind of a difficult thing to pin down and so we're going to start that sermon series this morning and continue it tonight our evening service tonight starts at six o'clock hope you'll be able to be back in the meantime really glad you're here this morning if you received a bulletin when you came in it has a fold-out portion to it that's our guest card if you don't mind filling that out and then it tears out and then if you'll place it in the offering plate when it comes by That'll give us a record of your visit this morning here at Broadway Baptist Church. Uh, tomorrow night starts softball. The softball league starts tomorrow night. So uh, everybody uh, find your icy hot tonight and put it in your, uh, put in your ball glove for tomorrow and, and bring it on out. Newman Park is where we play uh, softball. And um, so if you guys want to come on out at about 6.30, I also know this, that Wings is going on at the same time tomorrow night, and so uh, that's kind of a, not really a choice to, to me, but if you, uh, if you want, no, 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 I mean you come to Wings, that's what I'm saying, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right, there's a microphone, she, but uh, ladies, you need to come to Wings tomorrow night at yes, 6.30, that's your it's uh, always a great time of fellowship, I, I said that because Softball, schmoffball, you know? I mean, really, is that very important? Brother Phil, is that very important? Uh, that's right. <laughs> that was a good answer. Yeah, not as important as God is. So uh, wings tomorrow night at 630. And uh, now next week is a pretty big week for us as well. Yeah, next week is our promotion Sunday, and it's also our 50-foot-long ice cream Sunday that we will have uh, – over there in the Family Life Center right after church. So after church, you go over there for the kids, for adults. It's, we'll, have 50, we'll be having an ice cream sundae, 50 foot long. We'll have all the toppings, the uh, chocolate, caramel, or caramel, however, however you want to pronounce it. I think I've decided that I'm going to fall over to the dark side like uh, Hannah says caramel. Caramel. Because I think it sounds cooler to say caramel. It Come on, say, say caramel. Okay, it's caramel. It's like saying pecan, pecan. No, no, I'm not going that far, no. no. But uh, we'll have caramel, caramel syrup. We'll have the, uh, as far as the sprinkles, the hot fudge. We'll have all that whipped cream. We'll have all that you can put on your, you can put on your uh, as far as your Sunday. You can eat it all up, go home, and have dessert before you go home and have dinner. So I like it. Okay, back to school bash. We had a meeting last Sunday about the back to school bash. Um, kind of talked to some different people this week. Oh, I'm sorry. And um, <clears throat> what we've decided to do is we're just going to do it like we have the last couple of times. Um, we talked about maybe doing school supplies, but we're not having our back to school bash until the 31st, which is two weeks after school starts. So we don't really feel like that'll be the best route to go. So um, I've been gone. I did not get a sign-up sheet out, but I will get a sign-up sheet out this week for you to sign up. We'll need people to work tables. We'll need people to work the bouncy house. We'll need setup, cleanup, the guys to run 
our hot dogs. You know, there will be plenty of places for you to serve. Um, Joni and Tracy are going to make a bunch of phone calls to start getting people and donations together. But if your business wants to help, again, I know several of you, um, your business has donated water, your business has donated money just to go and buy the things we needed. So if you want to help at in that way, you can as well. And that's the 31st from 6.30 to 8.30. That's a Wednesday night. All right. And this coming uh, Saturday, August 13th at 8, 8, 8, 8 o'clock in the morning is our men's prayer breakfast. Uh, we missed out on that this, this past month in July. But we will have that uh, for us this coming uh, Saturday. So, men, we would welcome you to come. you be able to go and have a devotion and time of fellowship as, and, and a good breakfast as well. All right. And then uh, new member class begins on August the 16th. That's not uh, this Tuesday, but next Tuesday night. If you're interested in finding out more about the new member class, I, I already have several that are going to be going through this together with me. Um, then see me after church or, or just uh, catch me somewhere and find out about the information about the new member class. That will begin next Tuesday at 6.30, okay? And then also, um, we need some help in the children's ministry. If you are looking for a place to get plugged in, then um, we need you to serve there for an hour, um, roughly about once a month to help out uh, with the Kids Quest on Sundays or with Broadway Kids on Wednesdays. So if you would like to help out there, you can see Phil or Holly for more information, but we really do need some help there. And also, uh, next Sunday night, we had the opportunity the last few years uh, to, go, to get over there, to get with the, uh, the school across the street, the, uh, the intermediate school, and go over there on a Sunday night right before school starts and just kind of be able to go as a church, be able to go down and just uh, go down the hallways and the classrooms and just have an opportunity to just be able to go and just, just pray uh, for, for each, of each one of the classrooms, the teachers and everything. And, and I was able to go and we, we talked with the new principal over there this week. And uh, she was very grateful that, you know, for, for, about, for our church being willing to be able to go over there and help pray, pray for them, that they'll have a good school year, pray for the teachers and pray, and pray for the kids. So that would be next Sunday night, right after uh, services, if you if you like to if you'd like to. That's right. It is a prayer walk, and uh, it's been a real cool thing to be able to do the last couple of years over at SIS. So if you can join us, that'll be right after church next Sunday night. We'll just walk across the street and spend time in prayer. Well, speaking of spending time, I'm glad you're here to spend time with us this morning here at Broadway Baptist. Let's have a word of prayer. Then we're going to get started. Miss Tracy is going to come sing for us to start things off this morning. Father, we love you, and we certainly welcome you into your church this morning. We are honored and privileged to be able to gather together here in the sanctuary and be under the power and the influence of your Holy Spirit. We welcome you here right now. We know that uh, as we come together this morning, there are all sorts of feelings and challenges, difficulties, hardships, baggage, burdens that we bring into your house today. And I'm so thankful that you, Jesus, told us that we are able to lay all of those burdens down at your feet and take your yoke upon us. Your burden is easy and it is light. So we come before you now as you told us to do. Help us right where we need the help today. Speak to us right where we need to be spoken to. Use the music this morning to get us ready for your word here in a few minutes. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Just a small little disclaimer about my song. It might make you a little excited. So if you have your toe tapping shoes, it's okay to tap your shoes or tap your toes, whichever you need.
There's a battle we're engaged in. There's a goal line we must cross. There's a weight that must be lifted. There's a trophy to be won. And though it seems the battle's raging, some are falling at my side. Well, I'm going to run this race with courage till I cross the victory line. And it shall be mine. Oh, it shall be mine. Mine shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I sing and shout, have faith and never doubt, it shall be mine. Victory shall be mine, shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. For the joy that now awaits me when I've reached the other side, will I be safe at home with Jesus? In his presence so divine. And so I'll run this race with patience, looking forward to that time. Well, there's just one more. There's a step before me till I cross the victory line. And it shall be mine. Oh, it shall be mine. Be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I sing and shout, have faith and never doubt, it shall be mine. Victory shall be mine, shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, it shall be mine. Oh, it shall be mine. Mine shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. If I sing and shout, have faith and never doubt. Let the Lord fight my battles. If I sing and shout, have faith and never doubt. It shall be mine. Victory shall be mine, shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. Oh, victory. Jesus, my Savior forever, it shall be mine, victory shall be mine, shall be mine, victory, victory shall be mine, oh it shall be mine, it shall be Amen. Victory in Jesus. Man, I tell you what, let's go. Let's sing this morning. We are going to stand together and sing. He keeps me singing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Let's stand and sing it out this morning. What a wonderful thing it is to have that victory in Jesus. I was just reading that this morning, Hebrews 13, to patiently run the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, our author and finisher of our faith, he keeps me singing this morning. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's heaven. Jesus, 
continue to take us and use us and as we lift our voices up to you we also lift our offerings up to you this morning in praise and worship of how you have done such wonderful things in supplying all of our needs bless the gift and the giver this morning as we continue our worship in giving in Jesus name amen you may be seated as we continue to sing there's something about that name Jesus Jesus Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the something about that name this morning what a lovely and what a beautiful name the name of Jesus is as we worship together this morning singing this song let's sing it together the words will be on the screen join us as we sing together you were the word at the beginning one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a wonderful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. 
out now. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. Let's stand and worship. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Praise the name. him up and praise his mighty name today. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name As we continue to sing this morning and lift up the mighty name of Jesus, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Oh 
great God this morning. Thank you. It may be seated. And uh, kiddos, you guys come on down. Join Brother Phil for children's time this morning. All right. Whew. Still trying to catch my breath. Man. All right. I know y'all starting back up to school here in just the next few weeks. And though I know y'all are all excited about that and can't wait, of course. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna read the two verses and I want y'all to see and I want y'all to be able to tell me what word stands out the most that you can tell. So in Psalms 34 3 it says Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Then, if we turn right over just a few chapters over to, pay, to 69, Psalm 69, verse 30, it says, I will praise the name of God with a song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Out of those three verses, what word stood out? Magnify, there you go, good job. Magnify, and when we magnify, what is the purpose of a magnifying glass? To see closer, maybe a little bit more in focus. I know when we were at children's, uh, a kids camp a couple of weeks ago, we were there in the dorm, and Sergio came over, and me and my brother-in-law was, was sitting there, and we were, and with the kids, and he said, man, look what's on my towel, and I looked, didn't have my glasses on. I thought, oh, it looks like a little upside down beetle. And I thought, and, and uh, my brother-in-law, I think maybe Sergio said, that's a scorpion. And I was like, that's not a scorpion, it's a beetle. Look, I'll tickle him. And so I went down and Philip was like, uh, my brother-in-law was like, no, it's a scorpion. I was like, no, it's not. So I got down closer and all of a sudden his tail pops up. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess that would have been pretty bad if I tried to tickle a scorpion. That would not have been too good, but I couldn't tell. I wasn't, it wasn't in focus. I couldn't see it really, uh, really well. And even though they were trying to tell me, of course, they always try to kid around back and forth and stuff. I would, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to trust them in some things. But a magnifying glass is for us to be able to focus on them, be able to go and see more clearly. And, you know, I mean, that's what David is, is trying to sit there and go and to tell us is that on these verses, we need to take a closer look and see how, and see how big really God is. Because you know what? When we go and we take a magnifying glass and it goes and it lets us see something bigger, when we put our focus on God, when we magnify his, his name, we magnify him, we see how big he is, we also we know how wonderful he is. We also know a lot of times when we, we know how big God is, even on Psalm 69 it says, magnify him with thanksgiving which means we're praising him when we go and we see how big god really is and we go and we think about i think about it and we see how god how big god really is guess what sometimes a lot of times our, our, our problems the things that we go through in life and we all go through things sometimes things are good th sometimes uh, th times are bad but we magnify things on god we magnify god up we remember what he did for us on the cross how much he loves us we remember his promises. We remember that God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Does that mean we'll ever be alone? No, because God is with us. And we focus on God. When we go and we bring God and we're focusing on God, our troubles, times, those times in our life when things are going not very good and th times where it's hard to see God and we think God is afar off, when we have our magnifying glass, when we go and we concentrate on God, God's a lot closer. And we can see how God's working through our lives. So we need to make sure we're going and not only thinking about God, but magnifying him. Magnifying with, thanks, with our thanksgiving, our praises. We all got a lot to praise him about. First and foremost, our salvation. As a Christian, we, we said it several times before, as a Christian, we should be the most happiest, joyful people on this earth. And we, we are, when we go and we magnify him. We magnify and we see how much he loves us. It's kind of hard to be in a bad mood. We know somebody loves us that much. It's hard to kind of go in. So it's, we need to make sure we're magnifying God. So let's go ahead and go to, go to the Lord in prayer. We'll be dismissed and go over to Kids Quest. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, just thank you so much for your love for us. And we just ask, Lord, just thank you so much for all that you do for us and how you never leave us nor forsake us, how you're always there with us. We're never alone. And at times in our lives, Lord, we know it's, it, you can seem afar off. You can seem far away. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, just to help each one of us as kids, as adults, that we'll go and we'll remember who you are, remember what you've done for us, remember how you sent your son for us. And we go and we concentrate on these things. We can see all your promises that you give to us, the Lord. And you, we can magnify in you, and you will seem closer and bigger than ever. We just ask you to be with us as we go over next door, be with the pastor and, and the services here. That, that, that as they continue, just give, give him the words that you'd have him to say. And, and just be with us as kids over here in the Kids Quest. Just help everything that goes, goes on over there, the Lord, that we'll just praise your name. And we'll magnify you in Christ's name. Amen. As I travel day by day, oft I meet with pain and sorrow, and there's trouble in the way. But I have the sweet assurance that my soul the Lord will lead. I tell you, I have certainly enjoyed the singing this morning. Thank you guys for your participation and uh, making this morning's song service very, very special. And I also, uh, uh, 
I, I don't get a chance to do this a whole lot. The unseen, the only time that you ever know who the sound person is is when something goes wrong. Can I get an amen? amen. I mean, if something squeaks or squeals or doesn't start in time, all of you guys are breaking your necks looking up to see what is going on in the upper room, the sound room back there. So uh, Nate's running it this morning, and Nate, I appreciate you. We challenged you today, didn't we? Three CDs. Uh, all kinds of different stuff. I know she kind of had to adjust the sound right there early for the trio. I mean, we had you going today, and I appreciate you. I appreciate David Warren. He has been kind of a mainstay up there for many years, and, and uh, he's out uh, taking care of some business this morning. So uh, Nate is a one-man show up there with Cynthia running the computer. So uh, uh, when they fall asleep here in a minute because they've been working so hard during the song service, you won't even know it because they're up there out of sight, out of mind. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 20 this morning. Exodus chapter 20. I'm always just a little extra keyed up, just a little uh, extra edgy, if you will, when we begin a new sermon series. And today we begin a new sermon series talking about the theme of worship. I've told you a few weeks ago that I really believe there's three things in the, the spiritual life that are talked about a lot, but I think are very misunderstood, if not even misdefined, or hard to define, or difficult to grasp what's really going on with these three things. Okay, I believe the first one we dealt with last year in a sermon series about this time of year in prayer. I think we talk about prayer a lot. We pray even maybe a significant amount in church and things like that, and hopefully we uh, have become better prayers because of what we studied last year in the model prayer and following. And do you remember some of the principles that we talked about in just talking to God? Because prayer is just having conversation with God. Just like you're talking to a friend or your mate or your spouse, just, just uh, whatever you're talking, it's just like a conversation. So just talk like you're having a conversation with God. Now, I, I realize that, that he's you can't see. So that brings us to uh, the second thing that is very difficult to define. That's faith. Faith is, is invisible. And therefore, it's hard to put a real grasp on what faith really is. And so maybe next year about this time, we'll dive into faith as, as one of our topics for the year that are difficult or is difficult to grasp. But for this time... Maybe the linchpin, maybe the thing that holds prayer and faith together is actually what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, and that's worship. Worship. So in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1, we actually see some very familiar words to us. And they are what in Exodus chapter 20? The Ten Commandments. Kind of interesting that we would start a series on worship there just before we start reading the scriptures uh, we've been talking about this on wednesday nights for a few weeks and i'll go ahead and tell you that uh, this wednesday night we'll finish up our sermon series on on the kings and next wednesday night so a week and a half from today we'll we're going to start a verse by verse study series on wednesday nights through the revelation um a lot of you guys have asked about it, a lot of you guys have talked about it, a lot of you guys have asked me if, you're, if, you, if I'm ever going to do that. I was about seven or eight chapters in when we left Concho to come here in uh, a verse-by-verse study through the Revelation. So it's always a topic of interest. It's always kind of a, whoa, we're going to study the Revelation kind of situation. So I just want to go ahead and alert you to that for a couple of reasons. Number one is, is uh, most of us in here are adults. Now, we do have teen class on Wednesday nights that uh, you guys go into. And our teens and our kids are outnumbering us as adults in here. Shame on us. So we're going to open up the revelation to try to get you to come back. Okay? I'm taunting you. I'm using some incentive to come back on Wednesday nights. We all need a little midweek fill-up, right? And so uh, these studies in the Revelation hopefully will give us a little extra oomph to get back on Wednesday nights. And if you're not able to make it back for whatever reason, 
we start our live stream about the time that uh, the, the uh, message starts, which for the Revelation series will be around 7.15 or 7.20 on Wednesday nights. We're going to have to cut prayer time and missionary time uh, into that first 15 to 20 minutes because it takes a little while to get through these messages. It'll take at least 40 to 45 minutes to do these messages. Um, I'm going to use some graphics, going to use some illustrations, things like that that will help you picture the Revelation just a little bit better, especially when it comes to the churches that are, that are uh, talked about in 2 and 3 and a little bit in chapter 1 as well. So that's a week and a half away. Finish up the Kings this Wednesday at 7, and then we fire into the Revelation next Wednesday night. And I'm excited to be able to do that. The Revelation is the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing for its reading. And so uh, we're going to read and study it verse by verse together for about the next 10 years. So get ready. All right. <clears throat> Can't go through it quick because there's 22 chapters and, and uh, it takes me about six years to get through one. So uh, here we go. Exodus chapter 20, verse number one. And God spake all these words saying, I am, I am, I am. What is God? The I am. He just is. He's never had a beginning. He will never have an end. He just is. Now you and I will have a beginning and an end. Correct? Not God. He says, I am. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Significant why? Because it's, that is the Old Testament personal nature of God. That's the Old Testament Jesus. When the KJV keeps Lord in all caps. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, if you are saved today, you are no longer under the bondage of sin. Isn't that a great thought? Um, sin does not any longer reign in your mortal body is what the new testament says and so in romans chapter 6 paul says you shouldn't want sin to have dominion or control over you anymore and of course with jesus now living and residing in you you have the power to say no to temptation because all the devil can do is tempt. Now, he's good at it. Oh, yeah. I'm not tempted by a peanut butter cookie, but you put a chocolate chip cookie in front of me, and I'm chowing down. So the devil's probably not going to tempt me with a peanut butter cookie. But he will definitely tempt me with a chocolate chip cookie because he knows that I like it. And if you put pecans in there, I'm all over it. Rat on a Cheeto. I am getting down on a chocolate chip cookie with some pecans in it. That's what I like. The devil knows that. So he will tempt me with the things that I am most temptable over because he's observed me. But I'm not any longer under the house of bondage, so with the Holy Spirit dwelling in my heart, I can say no. I have the ability to say no. Do you know that? You do not have to sin because the Holy Spirit drives us to Jesus Christ who is our righteousness. Verse 3, since you are now out of the house of bondage, please know this, thou shalt have no other gods, little g, before me, big G God. Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's going to be the focus of this morning, the focus of tonight, verse 7. 
Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's commandment number three. Four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's commandment four. Five, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And number ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife manservant maidservant ox donkey or anything else that is thy neighbors and there you have it the ten commandments so when god gave moses the ten commandments there were two focuses the first four commandments Focus on God. I'm God. Worship me. Don't make idols. Don't take my name in vain. And keep the Sabbath. The next six focused on others. This is the reason Jesus was able to boil down the commandments in this way. You can turn over to Mark chapter 12, verse 28, and see it with me. Mark chapter 12 and verse number 28 is Jesus' summation of the ten. One of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that Jesus had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Mark 12, 29 says, Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second commandment is like this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these two. So again, let's think about this for just a moment as we introduce the topic of worship for the next few messages. The four commandments focused on God. No other gods in place of God. Don't make any idols. Do not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath in order to keep it holy. The next six commandments deal with loving your neighbor as yourself. Honor mom and dad. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not lie. And do not want what somebody else has for your own. There you go. Four focus on God. Six focus on neighbor. Jesus boils it down and says, love God. And then love your neighbor as yourself. I'm pretty sure that we all understand these Ten Commandments, right? Everybody with me? Everybody up? Okay. We're all, we all understand those, right? Okay. We got youth. Y'all understand. Got a few kids here. Y'all understand. Ten Commandments, right? We understand them. Not really anything overly difficult about understanding these Ten Commandments. But would you agree, some of them are kind of hard to keep? 
Because when my mama comes in and says, uh, Daniel, was that you that ate the uh, chocolate chip cookies with the pecans in them? No way. What did I just do? I just lied. And thus, I broke a Ten Commandment. Actually, two of them. Because I also didn't honor my mom and dad then, did I? By lying to my mom. Yikes! So I understand it, but sometimes it's not quite so easy to apply. So, let me ask you this. Can you relate with me that they are broken down into two parts? God focus, then neighbor focus. So this is a good start, I think, toward our beginning to understand what worship is all about. Let's dive into these first two commandments this morning. No other gods before me, and don't make any idols. But before we do that, very quickly, let's see if we can give worship a definition that is relatable for all of us. Quite simply, worship is, by definition, to adore, show reverence, to esteem worthy of praise. That's what the word worship means. It is to adore, to show reference, reverence, rather, and esteem worthy of praise. Practically, here's what worship is. Whatever or whomever we think about most, and we live our life around the most, through what we say and what we do, through what we talk about and for our actions. Okay, so that's the practical definition. Listen to it again. Whatever or whomever we think about most and we live our life around the most through what we say and through what we do. Spiritually, let's give it a definition. Spiritually, worship is to know God is God in everything and react according to this knowledge inwardly and outwardly. So spiritually, it is to know God is God in everything and react according to this knowledge inwardly and outwardly and then as an addendum to that we say this we can trust God and we can praise him in all things so we've got a simple definition this is what the word means we've got a practical definition and a spiritual definition of worship we will focus on these three definitions, keep them top of mind, and you will connect with these definitions as we move through this sermon series. So with these things in mind, it makes what Abraham said to those he left behind when he was following God to Mount Moriah to what he thought at that time was to uh, sacrifice his son Isaac. When he was following God obediently, it makes what he said true. Because in Genesis 22, 5, he says, And Abraham said to his young men, You guys stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder to Mount Moriah and worship. And then we'll come back again. Abraham thought he was going up to kill his son. Yet he said to his people that are following him, what he believed on the inside is what he was exercising on the outside. We're going up to the mountain and we're going to worship. Because I am going to know that God is God in everything. And I'm going to react accordingly 
on the inside, I believe that God's got something going on. I'm going to trust him. And then outwardly tells his men, we're going to worship up to the mountain. So let's see then if we can relate our definitions with these first two commandments. Okay? Verses 1 through 3 give us one God. Okay? Verse 3 particularly, thou shalt have no other gods before me back in Exodus 20. Let me just remind you very quickly that one of the three big temptations the enemy tempted Eve, Adam, and Jesus with is usurping the role of God in order to rule oneself. Okay, so if you go back with me to Genesis chapter 3, you didn't know you were going to wear your Bible out this morning, did you? Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 5, the devil says to Eve, For God doth know that in the day ye eat of the forbidden fruit, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, one of the big temptations the devil always fights us with is, you don't have to worship God. You're your own God. Make yourself happy. Do what pleases yourself. Don't, you don't have to get into all that worshiping God stuff, adoring Him, reverencing Him. It's all about you and what you want. You know, what's forgotten in the Garden of Eden is that there were a lot of trees out there, right? But there was only the one tree that God said, don't eat, don't eat the fruit out of that one. Just one. And yet, Eve must have gravitated herself pretty close to that tree for the devil to so easily have tempted her right there. Isn't that just like us? We just get down on the edge of temptation and then we wonder why we fail all the time. You know? We wonder why we're in such chaos all the time. Because the devil is going to tempt us to do our own thing, basically to worship ourselves. You can be your own gods. You know what? He did the same thing to Jesus. Now, this is very interesting. Look with me in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, then find verses 5 through 8. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. Now, we know that the, the devil tempted Eve three times with three different temptations. We're just looking and highlighting one of them. Same with Jesus. Luke chapter 3, verse 5. The devil, taking Jesus up into a high mountain, showed him all kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them, for that it is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will give, I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all of this shall be yours. We realize right here, the devil is admitting something. The devil is admitting that he made the wrong choice of who he was going to worship. He decided he was going to worship himself, do his own thing, came against God, and found out the hard way, that's how you get yourself dunk, right out of heaven. And relegated to where? The earth. 
because that's where he is. And he says to Jesus right here, all this is mine. This is where I've been relegated. And I'll give it to you if you'll just bow down and worship me, Jesus. Now, isn't that interesting? Okay, now we know Jesus didn't fall for that temptation. But how many times do we? When the devil comes up and says, this is, I give this all to you. It's mine to give to you if you'll just worship me. But then what are we doing? Immediately breaking any chance to worship God because we're breaking the first commandment. There's only one God. Please understand this. One of the main temptations thrown against us is to make anything other than God our God. Anything other than God our God. And the the devil leads us down this path because this is the path that he chose for himself. So, he eventually tempts us with other things, other people even the pleasing of ourselves, to become our God and come before our worship of God. So this is where the second commandment comes in loud and clear. All right, back in Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, Thou shalt not make, any unto, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in earth beneath or even down in the water. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, showing mercy unto thousands of them, though that love me and keep my commandments. So let me just say this with the second commandment in mind. No idols. An idol is anything that usurps God's position as God in our lives when this happens the idol becomes the object or the thing of our worship it's the focus of our lives this then breaks the second commandment so let me just tell you some things that can easily become, or has at one time, been an idol to me. Okay? So here's share time this morning. The first thing that became an idol to me as a kid, boy, teenager, and even sometimes as an adult, sports. Sports. I love sports. I love competing in sports. I love playing sports. I would get up every day of whatever season it was and think, I got to play today, whatever sport it was. At school, I would lead in the recesses. When it was football season, we played football. When it was basketball season, we played basketball. When it was baseball season, we had taken our gloves and balls to to school and we would play baseball and then all summer long we would get all the neighborhood kids together and we'd play more baseball hence baseball has really always been a battle for me as a god with a little g it has you can ask him till the rangers broke my heart about 10 years ago I would watch Ranger games almost religiously, wouldn't I? Almost every night. Now we can't even get them on TV, and it's our biggest blessing of our marriage. I mean, my life. Because it is very easy for me to make sports my God. Okay? So you know the thing I've really struggled with through my life is making a God is music. Music. I've always struggled with secular music. It's still a battle to this day. I'm proud of myself. I took a little trip down to Glen Rose, played a golf tournament last weekend, and 
Part of the way down there, I listened to gospel music. Part of the way down there, I didn't. It's always been a battle of mine. That leads me to one of my other gods, my job. When I got out of high school, oh, did I ever love my job. I was a disc jockey. I was on the radio. I'm talking for a living. They're paying me to talk. Are you kidding me? I've been talking for 20 minutes now. You guys know I can talk. And they're paying me for this? Seriously? And I get to play music, which I already like? Except for country. Don't stone me. I just never have really liked country music. It's a thing. With me. But I'll tell you this. One of the biggest heartbreaks of my life was the day that God took my God of my radio job right out from under me. Ooh, that was a hard fall. It was very humbling. But it showed me that I can't have another God in front of God. Ever. No matter what it is. When I was a teenager, one of my gods was girls. I just like girls. We won't have to elaborate there. Possessions can easily become a God for me. Money kind of goes hand in hand, can also become a God for me. And not to anyone's shock or surprise, golf can become a God to me. That's right. When I should be focused on God... During certain parts of the day, praying, reading, studying, I might be thinking about golf. It's kind of hard to worship God when I'm thinking about something else. Now, all I can do is tell you my story. What's your story? What gods with a little g bother you? Could be a relationship, could be a substance, could be, uh, it could be a job, maybe you relate to me in that. Your job is your identity and it holds you back. It could be a, could be a puppy dog, could be a horse, could be a uh, something really special that you've grown up around could be your vehicle, could be whatever. So what are the things that you struggle with as usurping the role of God in your life? What are some of the things that you make idols out of? One other thing that... Uh, kind of just popped into my mind i'm just going to say it and leave it is our health well that's been a kind of a hot button issue in the last uh, year and a half two years hasn't our health you know what i believe about my health i believe this when it's my time to go god's going to find me the bible says it's appointed on a man wants to die i have an appointment with death i know it's coming that doesn't mean that i'm going to absolutely abuse my body the bible also says that our body is the temple of the holy spirit so no reason to abuse my body between now and then i want to live as healthy as i possibly can between now and then and, and it also doesn't mean that we don't take some common sense you know like if i'm not feeling good you're not feeling good we might want to stay away from each other you know there are some very contagious things out there today But that doesn't mean that I should put my health before God. Because can I really add another even minute to my life? I can't. Therefore, my health can't be my God. I said I was just going to say that and leave it, but I didn't, did I? So what are some things other than God that you might be worshiping? 
Remember I told you the definition practically of worship is whatever or whomever we think about the most and we live our life around the most through our words and through our actions. And then spiritually the definition is this, to know God is God in everything and react according to this knowledge inwardly and outwardly. Meaning that we can trust and praise Him in all things. Too many of us admittedly think we can package worship up and confine it to its proper place and position within the realms of our lives. What we are beginning to see is that worship is far more than just an exercise we go through at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Worship is a lifestyle. That means worship has to be a choice that we make every day. That's right. I have to get up every day and say, God, you're my God. And please help me not put anything in your place. It's the first step Toward worship. Real worship. Worship demands our attention, our diligence, and our persistence. For as we all would attest, even so far in this first message, worship can be all too fleeting. As even some of you right now are thinking about something else true i know it is because i've sat in pews before thinking about something else during a message so what causes worship to flee what today might be bringing your worship of god to a halt is, is, is it an idol? Something you have allowed to take the place of God as your God in your life? Is it a sin that's become a habit? Is it actually that you are still at odds with God because you're still a sinner that's never received His gift of grace through salvation? In Jesus Christ. We must know that apart from God, we are nothing and we can do nothing. So that is the reason we have to worship Him. We must know that He is God in everything and of everything and react in this manner both inside and out right now. Doesn't matter what other people might think. This is between you and God right now. Are you fully worshiping God? Is He the number one priority of your life right now? If not, we'll never know what real worship is. Because there will always be something more important to us than God. Let's stand together. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Instrumentalists are coming. Please begin to play when you get there. As Lord, we come before you right now at a very serious moment because I fear we are all too familiar with the fact that we have broken these first two commandments far too often. And because of that, our relationship with you is struggling. 
to say the least. Not to mention our ability to worship with you is virtually non-existent. Oh yeah, we may feel some emotions in a song every now and then. A little tear comes to mind when we sing Amazing Grace. But to really worship you daily, not even happening. So Lord, will you please get to the heart of the matter with us this morning? And will you please, Holy Spirit, work to draw us to your son Jesus, to show us what it really means to have you as our Lord, to show us what it really means today to have you as our Savior. We'll thank you, Lord, for what you'll do in these next few moments of invitation as we open up the altars for a chance to respond to your word today. And we'll thank you for what you'll do in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As we begin to sing this morning, keep us near the cross. You come. You come right now. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious fountain free to sing one more verse this morning and there's still turmoil just let it go let it loose come to the altar today let's get rid of it let's let the lord have it completely and entirely if you're struggling with salvation if you're struggling with who's really lord of your life Alright guys, have a great afternoon. Hope to see you back tonight at 6 for our evening service. More great singing and uh, another message on worship tonight. We'll be talking about uh, the name of the Lord in vain, the third commandment tonight. And uh, bless the Lord uh, directs in another path. We'll always give him the benefit of the doubt there for sure. We want to do exactly what God wants us to do. So hopefully we'll see you back at 6. Remember, Sunday afternoon is nap time. 
That's what, that's what the acronym SAINT is. Sunday afternoon is nap time. So get a good nap, you saints. Get a good nap, you saints. And I'll see you back here at 6 tonight. Let's sing our benediction this morning. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Let's sing it out this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.